Anthony Scaramucci, the managing partner of Skybridge, founder of Skybridge, and of course, we're talking up no, no, to but, but you know, my claim to fame is I'm a really good friend of John and Jared. I mean, <laughs> ultimately, my well, largest claim to fame. One of your many claims yes. to fame. You're kind of famous for a whole bunch of reasons. Success in business, yeah. helping run political campaigns, yeah. being involved intimately with, with my both 11, Democrat my, and Republican. My 11 day train wreck in Washington, that probably helped me a little bit in terms of the fame. Right. Oh, yeah. It's hard to pick up a newspaper, especially that week, by the way. It was tough to pick up a newspaper without more, your face John, on the John, cover. I was getting more press than OJ, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad, but it's fine. It's all good. You know, but you guys created Skybridge Alternative Conference, which we call SALT, mm -hmm. um, out in Las Vegas. Ten, this is the 10th anniversary ten, coming up. 10 years, yeah. So. What possessed you to want to well, spend I mean, this kind of time and money on a conference out in Las Vegas for hedge funds and family offices? It's, a, it's an amazing story because we had nothing in March of 2009. The Dow was at 6,500. The mm -hmm. S&P was at the ominous 666 number, and yeah. there we were. The American financial system is rocked to its foundation as top Wall Street institutions topple under a mountain of debt. When you step back for just a moment, consider the events uh, of the so last... So like you're probably going out of business, so let's throw a farewell party in Vegas. That's basically <laughs> what it was. So I remember somebody saying to me, what was the genius strategy to do this? Said, oh, no, we didn't have a genius strategy. We figured we were going out of business. I actually thought I was going to end up as a third-party marketer. And so I said, okay, we'll have a conference. And so... Uh, we declared ourselves having a conference because all of the major banks had evacuated from Vegas at a time when those middle class bartenders and valets and maids uh, really needed conferences. You know, President Obama accidentally said, now's not the time to go to Vegas. If you have tarp money, stay home. And so those hotels were vacant. You could blow cannonballs through them. So our yeah. first room rates at the Encore were $99 to get this <laughs> thing going yeah. 10 years ago. And then it caught fire. We moved it to a little bit larger venue over at the Bellagio. It's been at the Bellagio the last nine years. Typically you have between you know, 15 and 1800 people there consistently. Obviously you've been there. And our goal there is to just bring a very eclectic mix of people. We want there to be the, you and I both believe in convergence. You know, Technology mm -hmm. is converging with entertainment, which is converging with our business, which is converging with artificial intelligence and all the other elements of our commerce and our society. And so mm -hmm. what we try to do is we try to bring people from uh, politics, sports, Hollywood, public policy, hedge funds, biotechnology, crypto, uh, right. cannabis now. And so we're ever evolving that program so that you, me, somebody super busy could pick up the agenda and say, okay, in two days, I'm going to get that kind of educational yeah. experience, meet a lot of fun people. And it is Vegas. And, you know, there's some people now that frown on Vegas. You know, we've got this society now where we're uh, just sort of judging each other and there's some level of righteousness and sanctimony, but not for me, John. Okay, no. I love Vegas. Okay. So I can't wait to get there. I can't wait either. Uh, it's going to be May 7th through the 10th, and uh, we'll have a special little uh, offer for folks if they can get there even at the last minute. Now, it's only a month out into the future. What I've been amazed about... I gotta tell you, this man has an unbelievable following because you, you sent out some like code and uh, people are coming in over the transom and so we're going to probably have to close registration Good. a week or so as a result Good. of the demand coming from uh, Dr. J. Thank you, man. <laughs> You're That's very really, welcome. You're the best. Absolutely. Now, Anthony, um, one of the things I've been amazed about, of course, are the speakers that you attract. The best of the best from the hedge fund world. If there is a Bobby Axelrod in the hedge fund world like Stevie Cohen. He's been there. Mm -hmm. um, if it's, there he's is been there a few times. Dave Einhorn, Tepper's been there. Yeah, uh, yeah, all of these uh, yeah. legendary hedge fund guys, yourself, of course, but because of those guys and men and women being there, yeah. you've also attracted, as you said, people from technology. You know, Schmidt from Google. Um, you've got uh, Sarkozy, the former leader of France. You've had Tony Blair. You've had George W. Bush. Gordon Brown. We've had uh, President Clinton, Governor Mitt Romney when he's running for president. Mm -hmm. uh, We've had a collection of secretaries of state, whether it was uh, Colin Powell or Condoleezza Rice, uh, Leon Panetta. Uh, one of the most fascinating things for me was uh, uh, George uh, Walker Bush after 
bin Laden was killed. And so uh, the raid on bin Laden was May 1st, and we had uh, President Bush, I think, May 3rd or 4th, so three or four days after bin Laden got killed. And so he made his first formal public remarks about the bin Laden raid uh, up on our stage. So, so uh, and, you know, and, and here's the thing. It's small enough, John, so that people that attend the conference will mix with these people. I mean, right. some of my favorite moments is, you know, Mark Cuban said to me, listen, I can come, I'll come speak, I'll come to your VIP dinner, but after that, I got to go home. And he was having so much fun, he looks over at me and says, okay, Forget about what I just said. Where's the pool party, Mooch? Let's go to the pool party together. You know? <laughs> or, you know, Colin Powell said to me sort of the same thing. He, he was calling me Tony. You know, Tony, I mean, my, my wife was really laughing. No one ever calls me Tony. No. Said, hey, Tony, where, where's the VIP party in the suite? I said, here we go, Secretary. Let's go upstairs. You know, Mike, uh, Mayor Bloomberg was there a few years ago. Uh, obviously, Vice President Biden was there uh, last year. Uh, you know, we've had uh, guys like Bill Ackman. Um, listen, it's just been, it's been a very eclectic mix, but it's small enough so uh, your guests uh, if they decide to come uh, they'll have an opportunity to interact with people mm -hmm. that sometimes they probably see on television or read about and then guess what they'll learn they'll learn what you and I have learned that we're all putting our pants on the same way yep uh, and that the path to excellence is through persistence and perseverance and education and all those sorts of things and so uh, for me I love bringing a lot of young people there too you know uh, John Dorsey who's running this uh, thing for us has a leadership program uh, where we bring people from colleges and uh, the early parts of their career. We help them network to find jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're very, very proud of what's happened out there in the last 10 years. Right. It's it's a tremendous opportunity, like you say, um, to rub shoulders with the leaders of technology, of finance, politics, mm -hmm. whichever brand, because you, you yeah, draw from both Republicans yeah, so we've and got, Democrats. We've got Susan Rice coming. Uh, we've got uh, Valerie Jarrett coming. But we also have Ambassador Haley coming, and Nikki Haley. Um, mm -hmm. We've also got John Kelly coming. I mean, it's yeah, one of the General better Kelly. stories for me. I mean, John fired me uh, on my 11th day in the White House. I mean, he ejected me like I was an Austin Powers villain. Totally fine. I made a mistake, and I get that. But why have a grudge? Uh, and and uh, that's another big lesson for younger people mm -hmm. that follow you, John. Uh, no grudges in sports and politics. You've been an athlete your whole life. You mm -hmm. win some, you lose some dust yourself off and get back in the game. And uh, General Kelly's an American hero, and so I thought it was very important for me to reconnect with him and uh, very proud to have him out there. Admiral McRaven, uh, that yep. gave that uh, great uh, commencement speech a few years ago. Down at Texas. Down in Texas. He was uh, obviously coordinated the SEAL strike on bin Laden. He wrote that book, uh, you know, first thing you do in the morning is make your bed, you know, which is pursuant to that uh, speech that he gave. Mm -hmm. And uh, he'll be there as well. And, uh, you know, the, the fun thing for me is to watch people interact with people and to realize that, one, we're all the same. Two, uh, there's an opportunity to learn about the near future. I can't can't tell you the number of times that I've been at SALT uh, where somebody's brought up something in biotech or somebody's brought up something in our business and then you know two or three years later you're watching that trend emerge. And you're watching uh, I, 100x and, return yeah, yeah. in some you, cases. You, yeah, well Lee Cooperman that one year and, and, and so to me this is a near future conference. You want to come mm -hmm. to SALT, uh, you'll learn something on May 7th, 8th or 9th or 10th that will come to be true in 2023 mm -hmm. and you'll be like wow I'm glad I got there early because I got I got an early part of that trend that's going to happen in our com commercial uh, industry. Right. And I think you're smart this year, especially you've got uh, cannabis, which is one of the hot sectors. Obviously, it's Canada, but the U.S. growers John and, and I like that. don't inhale it. Just so everybody knows, yeah, just that's right. sure everybody knows it. Never inhaled. Um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, it treats. Uh, pain. Um, so it's got medical uses, yeah, it's got recreational uses, 100%. It could and be people a want to know how opioids. to invest in it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, it could really help alleviate elements of the opioid crisis. Look, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm in all seriousness, I'm not a big opponent of youth uh, using it for recreation because mm -hmm. uh, brains are still in development up until the age of 25, so people should slow that sort of thing down. But as it relates to pain relief, joint relief, therapies related to chemotherapy in terms of relieving nausea, a potential opioid replacement, which mm -hmm. would reduce the number of deaths as a result of opioid addiction in the country. These are all things that uh, people need to learn about. You know, this is a sign of my old age, John, but what I sometimes look at, I said, okay, 
I don't know a lot about crypto. I don't know a lot about cannabis. My guess is my peer group doesn't either. You know, you may you may remember the story of Jamie Dimon, who I think is arguably one of the smartest people in our industry. He was negative on crypto, and then he learned that there were three or 400 people inside JP Morgan that were working on crypto and a JP Morgan token. And so he had a reverse course. That's a sign, he's one of the smartest people I know, mm -hmm. uh, but he's a contemporary of ours. It's a sign that, okay, our, people our age have got to get up to speed on crypto. And so, you know, a lot of people have responded to me saying, hey, I'm so glad that there's going to be a crypto immersion element of this conference so I can get, get out there and learn things. Sure. Uh, related to it. Typical folks that attend. There will be individual investors who are, quite frankly, quite large usually. Oh, yeah. We, investors, we, we family typically offices. get eight or nine hundred what I would call capital allocators. So if you're mm -hmm. a hedge fund manager, you've got that that piece going. But yes, lots of family offices, lots of endowments, uh, lots of uh, corporate pension funds, but also state f pension funds. And it's a good opportunity to do three things. Number one, you learn something that you may not have learned. Number two, meet people that can help your business. If you're a mm -hmm. capital allocator, you may meet a new hedge fund that you can make that connection to. If you're a hedge fund manager, it may be a good platform to reach investors. Or if you're just out there, even you know, I've told reporters, come out there, my guess is you'll meet new sources. Rob Seachin, you know, he's one of my very mm -hmm. close friends. He's on yep. the air with you at CNBC all the time. Rob met Scott Wabder at the SALT conference, and as a result of that, it developed into that relationship. So these are all positive externalities that happen at SALT. I mean, I, I, my team here at Skybridge, and myself personally, we take an enormous amount of pride in someone saying, me, hey, you know, I went to the conference, I met somebody, they made a $50 million investment in my fund, or I, I was able to uh, meet people that helped me in my job as a journalist, or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. All of those positive uh, externalities, we're belie believers in a rising tide lifts all boats, uh, and we should be out there trying to cooperate with each other in our industry. So uh, I'm super excited about what we're, we're doing. There's also a fun segment to SALT, uh, yeah, and no one course. of those fun segments is you guys have just brought in some of the best of the best as far as entertainment. I remember being there for Lenny Kravitz yep, and five. just being blown away. Adam, Adam Levine, Levine and, and Maroon 5. 5. And there one he is at the Republic. Super Bowl this year then. Yeah, right. No, exactly. We got him early, thank God. Right. Uh, one Dur Republic. Dur Duran Duran. You know, I mean, you know, yeah. Legendary bands. Duran Duran makes it takes me back to 1980s when I had that mohawk, you know what I mean? Or that mullet. But but you know the, the, the truth of the matter is this year we're going throwback throwback and so we've got John Fogarty from Credence Clearwater uh, he's going to play the set uh, very similar to the one that he played at Woodstock. And so uh, I 50th got, anniversary 50th of Woodstock. 50th anniversary yeah. of Woodstock. Uh, about three weeks ago, I got the opportunity. I got tipped off that he was going to be playing with Billy Joel at Madison Square Garden. So I mm. took uh, my wife, Deirdre, and I went to go see him play. He played two songs with uh, Billy. Phenomenal. I mean, he sounded like he was really right back there in 1969. And so uh, there are kids in this office, okay, that had no idea who the hell he was, but they all know his music. And so mm -hmm. I'm super excited to bring him back. Uh, we're going to use uh, one of the clubs over at Aria this year, so it's going to be a little bit more intimate setting, and uh, we're su super excited about it. Yeah, and you know, as uh, salt winds down each day, there are opportunities, like you say, there are private parties that a bunch of the hedge fund folks might yeah, throw. No question. There are uh, opportunities to go out to the cabanas out by the pool. Yeah, well, and we love that. We there's we, a lot we, of mingling. We tell people what we're hoping to do is, you know, a lot, a lot of like what they've done at Comdex. We're hoping that salt will be the center of the atom, and then there'll be electrons spinning around that, mm -hmm. um, and it will be a way to galvanize people to the industry. And so. You know, People tell me, oh, well, you know, we're going here, we're going there, we're going to the Cosmopolitan for this, we're going to the wind for that. It gets me super happy. You know, I want sure. to create an ecosystem around salt uh, where people are benefiting. At the at the end of the day, um, we started the event to make it an industry event, uh, but also a thought leadership event. You know, it's mm -hmm. now becoming, you know, with Ben Horowitz coming, David Rubenstein returning, uh, the guys from General Atlantic coming this year. Uh, it's becoming a private equity venture capital hub with hedge funds. Mm -hmm. And as we start to build those pieces out, I see really, really exciting things ahead for the damn thing. I do too. Anthony Scaramucci. Right, well, great, great to be always with you. Proud always proud to call you my friend. If I, and I'm if so I wear that beret on the salt stage. All right. All right. Uh, I mean, I'll you, get you one. What do you think will happen to me? <laughs> well, uh, you're already a magnet. Well, let me just let me just explain. The only reason I wouldn't wear that for, because I still have my hair. That's okay, right. He doesn't need to. <laughs> so guys that still have their hair, they don't wear hats like that. Okay, but <laughs> Majarian's better looking. Samuel L. Jackson and John yeah, Majarian. He, he's he's way more better looking. He's way better. Shape, so what can I tell you? Anthony, God bless. We'll you. see you at Salt. Thank you, my man.